All right, hey guys. Welcome to another episode of VTech Academy where you ask questions and I give you my best damn guess. All right, so uh, David Green from YouTube writes, uh, I put a K24Z7 transmission on my 2010 Honda Accord. I don't know where to put the reverse lockout wires. Please inform me what to do. So the wires for the reverse lockout need to go obviously to the reverse lockout mechanism. Uh, you're gonna need one power wire and you're gonna need one wire that triggers it. So um, unfortunately, your computer that you're using, which is your core DCU, doesn't have a way of triggering that. So basically you're gonna need to figure out a different way to get that grounded so that it actually uh, triggers a reverse lockout. So, but let's start off with how you're gonna get power to it. Inside the harness, there are a bunch of black yellow wires. Tap into any one of those, uh, and then bring that power to your reverse lockout. Then there's another lead that comes out of there. That one needs to go to ground. So you're gonna to need to bring that one through the uh, firewall along the wiring harness and get it over to the driver's side somehow. And since the ECU can't trigger it, you're gonna have to find a different way to do that. Now, you have a couple of choices. One of them would be, do, would be to put a momentary off switch. So what that is, is a, a switch that normally has a connection. So when you push it, it breaks the connection. Uh, so what you do is you would wire one side to that wire that came from the uh, solenoid and then the other wire would go to a ground. And you basically, when you want to put it in reverse, you push that button, you put your car in reverse, and otherwise you're locked out. Uh, the other option would be to set it up on a speed activated uh, switch. Now, uh, speed activated switches, there's only a few places that you can buy those. Uh, I would try K-Tuner. I know they had one in um, prototyping. So if they've got one available, that makes it work like a stock TSX. So basically what happens is you would take this whole switch, you would wire a power in the ground and you would wire then uh, a lead to the um, to the uh, vehicle speed sensor or the counter shaft speed sensor wire. And then uh, once the car reaches a certain threshold, it's going to trigger another wire that you then wire to uh, the reverse solenoid. And that would make it act most like uh, you would a, a stock car. So that's how you do the reverse lockout. Uh, funny thing about that, Carter, who has an Accord with this exact same swap, swears that he's never accidentally went over into the reverse uh, uh, the reverse part of the shifting. He uh, shifts between five and six with no problems. I don't quite trust myself like that. Uh, I've driven a uh, Civic, a uh, 2000, uh, one Civic with a, a TSX transmission and I find every once in a while I'll try to hit that reverse gate and uh, although it'll never go in if you're traveling fast uh, still the fact that it makes a little grind sound is a little bit uh, disheartening uh, so uh, I would do suggest either putting a momentary switch in it or getting a, a, a speed activated switch. Next question we have here is from VTechJ. I have a question I need help with. I recently case swapped my Civic EKSI. My cluster on the dash reads my RPM and speed, but the ECU does not. What do I do? Well, that's an interesting question. So uh, the wiring for the ECU is in your harness, and if your harness is unmodified, I find it kind of, and this is the engine harness I'm talking about, <laughs> I find it really odd that it's not getting back to the ECU. The wiring for the ECU on uh, a K-Pro, and that's what I'm assuming you have, uh, comes in through uh, comes in through A18 on the ECU, and that wire basically comes from the vehicle speed sensor, goes to A18, and it has one wire that branches off that goes to the C101 plug, which is that big gray plug, and that's how it gets to the dash so that your speedometer reads. So if your dash is reading, that connection is good from the C101 to the uh, to the transmission. So I don't see why it would be bad from the C101 to the ECU connector. So the first thing I would check is I would check <coughs> and make sure your ECU, since it's a Honda data, 
isn't set up, uh, and I'm assuming it's a Honda Adder because you have an 0204 R sex type S transmission. It may be something in your settings on your computer. If your computer is set up to read a constant speed, then it's not. Then it's basically going to ignore the uh, the speed the speed signal. Uh, if it is actually getting to the uh, if it is actually not getting to the ECU, then I think it's likely a pin fit problem on A18. So I check A18. Uh, the, on the uh, e on the uh, ECU connector, make sure it's not kind of hogged out for some weird reason. Uh, maybe that's actually causing the problem. Um, but I would find it unusual that that would have been changed. Uh, if your harness, of course, has been modified, that may be where the problem is. So you want to check and make sure you have continuity. <coughs> pardon me, between A18 and the uh, vehicle speed sensor connector. Bobby Delamar from YouTube has a question. Uh, he says, great info, thank you very much. Obviously watching one of our videos and says, I've been trying to get my 89 CRX running. I'm at the wiring point. I've installed a K24A2 from a TSX, 2004 I think, and it has a six speed LSD transmission from a 2006 Civic SI. I purchased a K-Pro Honda a Bluetooth, but the engine has no harness. I have a cable throttle body with a Carceps adapter uh, not sure what harness I'll need, engine, jumper harness. I was thinking CJ wiring, unless there's a cheaper option. The ECU actually dictates the harness you want. Uh, the harness that you would like to use is 02 to 04 uh, RSX harness. That harness is basically plugs right into that ECU you're using. So that would be ideally the harness you'd want to use. Uh, you could also use a manual uh, CRV harness uh, 0304 manual CRV harness that would work as well. Uh, the later model stuff needs to be modified. The Accord harness needs to be modified. The 0506 RSX harness needs to be modified. Those aren't as good an option. Now, uh, another inexpensive option is to get the CRV automatic harness and then convert it to manual. Now, not everybody's able to do that. It requires buying some parts, but those harnesses can be had for between $40 and $100 in a salvage yard and can be modified with about $40 of the parts, actually probably less than that, probably like $25 of the parts. So that winds up being the cheaper option if you know how to do that. I keep promising everybody I'm gonna do a video on that. I haven't gotten to it yet. I apologize about that, but uh, I swear to God, we'll be coming up. Uh, now, that is actually the engine harness part. Uh, people like CJ's Wiring and RyeWire, they do actually make that particular harness. Uh, it's quite a bit more expensive than a used harness is, but they're really, really nice. So that, of course, is an option. Uh, and then uh, uh, the other part you need is the adapter harness. That's the part that actually interfaces between the engine harness and the car. And it also, inter it also has connections for the E-plug. The e-plug has most of the power connections back to the car, so uh, it's kind of essential. Now, on the adapter harness, again, you need something for an EG and you need something for uh, the Honda at ECU. So uh, all of those are gonna be basically plug and play with your system. Uh, so just go ahead and, and, and order that from Hasport, Hybrid Racing, uh, Brywire, CJ's, any of those companies, all those uh, basically work the same way. Um, K-Tuned as well, they all work with that. So again, Honda, data, that dictates the wiring harness. And then uh, because that's the wiring harness you're gonna use, that dictates the adapter harness you're gonna use. As far as less expensive stuff, uh, you just check the prices and see who has the best deal on those things. And uh, again, if you can find a used, uh, uh, 2000, uh, 2002 to 2004 RSX harness, that's, that's gonna be the easiest thing. You can even use a base harness, by the way. Um, uh, the only thing that you're going to have to do because you're using the 06 Civic SI uh, transmission is you are gonna have to convert the uh, vehicle speed sensor to a counter shaft speed sensor. Now, uh, we have a video on that, and basically it entails taking the signal wire uh, you're going to use that, but you have to change the other two wires, the power wire and the ground wire. 
they can't use 12 volts that the VSS uses. They have to use five volts and they have to use uh, the signal ground wire. You're gonna tap into, I believe, the TPS wiring uh, in order to get those uh, five volt signal and, uh, and ground signal. So next question, Chris Wong from email to uh, askvtechacademy at gmail.com says, I have a question for you. I have a Civic EK with a K20 and EG subframe. I want to go back to B series and still use the EG subframe. Is that possible? And what would I need to do? Well, actually that is possible. The only thing you really need to change in order to do that is the rear bracket. So what winds up happening is the rear mount is same EG or EK, but it's in a different place. So if you use the DC2 rear transmission bracket, that solves your problem. Now Honda hasn't made these for a while, but you can find them on eBay or you can find them uh, in salvage yards. Uh, and of course, Hasport has their own version of it that they make. So all you need is that uh, DC2 style rear subframe bracket and uh, that will allow you to mount that engine in there uh, without changing the, the EG subframe. Israel Gomez says, uh, hey boss, I have an EK with a K24A2 and a K20Z3 transmission. I was using the stock Accord shifter box and shifter cables. I had the shifter mounted in the tunnel and the cables were a little too long, but it shifted fine. Now I just installed a K-tuned Accord K20Z3 uh, shifter. And this time when I mounted it in the car, my problem is my cables are a little too long. Uh, now my question is, are the 0611 Civic SI shifter cables shorter than the 05 Accord shifter cables? Well, I've never actually compared the length of the two, but it actually doesn't really matter because you're not going to be able to use the 06 Civic shifter cables. They actually attach differently onto the shifter. On the shifter mechanism on the Accord shifter, they have the ball socket on the shift lever for the push and pull part of it, but the side to side movement, that's actually uses um, like a rod end or an eyelet on there and it, and it slips onto a peg. On the 06 Civic, it uses a ball socket there too, so it does not connect the same. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody <coughs> that makes an adapter uh, that you could do something with, uh, so unfortunately those cables aren't going to work with the shifter you have. Uh, so, sorry about that. Okay, we have another question here. This time from Kareem Ellenbury. I have a 2006 Honda Accord with a K24A8. That's the motor it comes with. Uh, it's an automatic and I would like to convert it over to five speed and possibly a K24A2 TSX engine. I would like to know what I need to make the swap a reality. What transmission should I get? Can I use my Accord ECU for K tuner? If not, what are my ECU options? Thanks for your help. You guys are awesome. Have a nice day. All right, so first of all, uh, K-Tuner will absolutely work with that. You can take your 2006 Honda Accord ECU and you can actually use it with a manual transmission. They can load the manual code into that automatic transmission and it'll work just like it should. Um, now, uh, some of the other things you're gonna need is obviously you're gonna need to, to change the wiring in the car. Uh, by the way, you can use, uh, with your stock mounts, you can use the Accord or the first gen uh, TSX ECU. Both of those use the same mounts. That transmission will bolt right in. The shifter cables will bolt right on. That'll work just fine. The problems are gonna be with the wiring in the car. So let's go over that real quick. First off is uh, the ignition switch. The ignition switch is set up with a little lock on it so that if the car's not in park or neutral, you're not gonna be able to turn the ignition switch off. You need to disable that first. It's actually a little piece that's on the ignition itself. You remove it, it's I think a single Phillips head holding it on. So that will uh, uh, eliminate that little lockout thing that's there. The next thing is the park and neutral for the starter. Now you can't start the car unless it's in park or neutral. Uh, with a manual transmission, that, that system is basically a relay that knows whether or not you're parking neutral. You want to set it up so that um, that little system works with your clutch pedal or just bypass it all together. Now remember, if you bypass it all together, you could accidentally, if your car was in gear, 
turn the key on and start up with it in first gear and the car would take off on you or something like that. So you want to be careful uh, if, you, if you choose that option. Now, some people who are doing race cars like that option because they can use a starter to get off the track if they have a problem. But uh, generally speaking, that safety device was put in there so you don't accidentally smash somebody into a garage door or garage wall when, you, when somebody hits the starter when they shouldn't. Um, now, the next thing is your backup lights. Your backup lights on a reverse system are triggered to the reverse through a relay that's typically, I'm not sure where it is on the Accord. I would imagine it's uh, over by the glove box somewhere, but you're gonna have to look that up yourself. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, but that relay, when it sees reverse, that triggers the backup lights. What you need to do is get those two wires to go to the transmission rather than to the relay. That way, once they go to the transmission, when you actually put it in reverse and the reverse switch sees it, that'll turn on your backup lights. So uh, that's basically what you need to change in order to get to work. Um, I believe that that place where the cables go out is the same for automatic and manual, so I don't think that's a big deal. I think you just need the shifter mechanism and then pull the old one out. Uh, so I think it's not gonna be that difficult to do. Well. That is going to wrap it up for this evening. I actually have more questions, so I will be back to answer more questions. By the way, if you have a tech question you would like answered, go ahead and use our email, askvtechacademy at gmail.com, and I will be happy to answer your question. Anyway, thank you guys very much for clicking on us, and we'll talk to you later.